been a while, but I'm back and I just went to my 9 a.m. class. I came back to pick up a few things and get ready because I just looked terrible this morning. Now I'm going to Blue Bottle before my art museum section and I'm going to be spending the evening with the girls by the river and do like a little sunset picnic just because the weather is so nice these days. I don't know if you guys notice anything, but I got a haircut and if anyone's in the Boston area, there's a place called MG Hair Salon that does Asian hair so, so well. And they did mine so, so well. So I highly recommend them. And I think that's it. There's not been too much going on, but it is almost noon. So we should probably head out. Hi guys! Hey guys. We're sitting by the taro. <laughs> They're the life of a harbor <laughs> No, stop! <laughs> I'm about to go work out with Kat and I'm feeling very lazy, especially because yesterday's workout was really hard and my legs and ass feel like they're going to fall apart. But I know if I don't go today, I'm not gonna go tomorrow or the day after, so I must be strong. We will be strong. <laughs> Oh, you're right. Maybe I can throw it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> 
So every week I put up an Instagram story asking you guys if you have any questions and at the end of every video I answer a few of them and we are at that time in which I answer questions. So a question that I really liked um, was I draw all the time. What's a first step towards the type of design you do from paper to digital? I feel like I have decent advice on this because I went from traditional painting and drawing into digital media. So when I first started doing digital art, I feel like I would do it every once in a while and kind of give up. But I feel like a lot of people pick up and drop hobbies really quickly because they aren't able to catch on to it immediately. I think I had the method of learning down, but I just had a really bad habit of giving up on things that I wasn't immediately good at. Definitely my toxic trait. But what I basically did was assign myself super simple projects to complete on whatever platform I wanted to learn. So the first platform I learned was Adobe Photoshop um, and the second was Adobe Illustrator. I kind of learned them in conjunction with each other. So some examples of easy projects would be designing a social media post for your club or maybe a movie poster for your bedroom wall. And if you're starting from scratch, completely zero, if you are making a social media post for your club, for example, let's say you want to make a flower and you don't know how to make a flower, so you're gonna Google how to make a flower in Illustrator. By Googling that, they will teach you how to use the shape tool, probably the pathfinder tool, stroke and fill, and so on, right? So by slowly giving yourself these projects and Googling how to do every single step, you're gonna build up your toolkit of skills that are transferable through the entire Adobe suite and also on things like Figma, Canva, because honestly, the workspace is pretty similar across all design software. But that's how I learned. I gave myself a project every single day. And through that, I was able to just learn so much in the span of a month. So if you're really serious about transitioning into design, I would highly recommend putting in the time and the practice set aside two hours a day. It sounds like a lot and I know a lot of people don't have that time, but the time that you would usually spend going on Netflix, maybe like watch a tutorial video. And if you really love it, I feel like it's also a lot of fun. Also, a few of the questions you guys left in my last video, I feel like require an entire video in itself just because it's such a lengthy process to explain portfolios and explain how I film and stuff like that. But those videos are definitely coming, so stay tuned. But the next question I'm gonna answer is how to find my design style. So to be completely honest, I feel like I still haven't found my own design style. Like I know where it's headed, but I don't know what it is yet and what makes me different from other designers. But I can share how I've gotten to where I'm at now, which is basically just exploring different styles until I found myself retreating back to this one design style that I really like. I feel like my style is a mix of like very cutesy and like somewhat retro, but I don't know that retro is really my style. I feel like it's just a popular style now that I am combining into my work, but I think my work is definitely very cutesy and round and bubbly and, and appeals more to a younger audience. So that's kind of where I'm at now in terms of my design style. I think to narrow it down even more would just take a little bit more time. The more projects you work on, whether those be personal projects or for clients, you'll be able to hone down kind of like what you like and what you don't like and lean into what you like and see what you can do with that. I feel like I was copying styles for a long time because I wasn't very confident in the idea that I could develop my own, but now I'm definitely really working on that because I'll never be the best at someone else's work. If you're struggling, don't worry. I've been at this for like five years and I still don't know what I'm doing. For some people it comes really fast and for other people it takes more time. Don't rush yourself. Enjoy the process, you know, it's fun. Sorry that I only answered two questions. I feel like those are pretty lengthy answers, so I don't want to make this video too long. But if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them down below or answer my weekly Instagram poll. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting me per usual. And I will see you guys next week.